the one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the formation volume factor and what role it plays there. Um, of course, we know that um, our equations are in rate form, so if we look at you know what the units of that would be, you know, a volume um, with respect to time, you know, looking at the the B matrix, right? Uh, there you have the vol, you know, explicitly any B I I entry is uh, the volume of the ith grid block times the porosity uh, times the compressibility over the formation volume factor, and you know, this combination, the volume of the ith grid block times the porosity is the volume of the fluid, okay? Well, this is the volume of the fluid. Um, well, we haven't specified what we're talking about in terms of is this the, f you know, the equations, all of the equations we derived, we derived them in the reservoir, right? Uh, if you go back to the original lecture when we derived the pressure diffusivity equation, we were talking about the density of the fluid in the reservoir, right? The, flow, the, the fluid in the porous media. But now that we've introduced wells, what we're really interested in is the fluid that's produced at the surface, right? Um, and so the formation volume factor, of course, has the, and you know, alpha here, alpha could be for um, oil, water, or gas, right? It could be any of those. And it's defined as the volume of the fluid under reservoir conditions over the volume of the fluid under standard conditions, right? So your, your, your standard conditions are standard conditions correspond to, you know, a pressure, an atmospheric pressure, 14.7 PSI, temperature 60 degrees F, <coughs> and then you measure the volume, that's your volume at standard conditions, right? And so, um, you know, what we're really solving or, or what the equations should have uh, in them is, would be associated with the volume under reservoir conditions, but then we can convert the volume under reservoir conditions into the volume under standard conditions um, with this B alpha. And that allows us to, when we talk about the rates <coughs> that we're producing, these are the rates at the surface. So that's the role that the formation volume factor is played. Of course, you should have seen this in your other classes um, on reservoir engineering, but you know the, the formation volume factor of oil is always greater than one. Uh, the formation volume factor of gas is always much less than one. <coughs> and the formation volume of water is on the order of one. Right? So that's because <clears throat> when you have oil under reservoir conditions and you bring it to the surface, uh, to standard conditions, there's oil in, I mean, there's, there's uh, gas in the oil that comes out of solution. And so you end up with a little bit less oil at the surface than what you have under reservoir conditions. Uh, of course, uh, the gas expands vastly as you bring it to the surface, uh, but there's not much change in water between the reservoir conditions and the surface conditions. So. Uh, you should have seen that in the other classes, but that's the role it plays here uh, is that in converting from, you know, the, the density and, uh, and volume in the reservoir, which is where we're solving the equations, to uh, volumes at the surface, which is what we want to produce or inject, okay? <clears throat> the last comment, then, about the, the Q vector, remember, you know, before, uh, well, Q was defined as one over delta T uh, B times PB, right? And if you recall what PB was, was PB, <coughs> PB had, um, you know, it, it's a place where the boundary conditions associated with constant pressure boundary conditions would go. So you'd have either, if we're talking about a one-dimensional reservoir, which we are here, either in the first column or the last, you'd have a two eta um, PB, where PB is the, is the pressure on that boundary, and then the rest would be zeros. Well, so if we then, um, you know, go back and look, well, the, um, 
well, if, if we pull out this eta and we and we add it to this right here, so that you know this this comes something like one over delta t. I'm sorry, rather eta over delta t b times a vector that just now has two p b in it because we pulled out the constant, right? Well, this is what we defined as the transmissibility, right? And so then if you look at what kind of the final form of the Q equation will be now for a constant pressure boundary condition would have 2T PB here. And then zeros everywhere else, okay? But since now Q is a, a, a vector of rates, we can use this to include <coughs> wells, right? So if, for example, we had a well in the third grid block, <coughs> We could then replace that with <coughs> either a positive or negative value associated with the injection or production of, of uh, at, at some constant rate. So this al allows us a way to incorporate wells into our model. 